So we can conclude that ASD females and males appear similar. ASD females and uh, sorry are more attentive, less disruptive, and less defiant than ASD boys or typically developing girls. Now, all of you know this already. All of you have seen this. No surprises there. When we looked at communication, what we found was unusual speech. Girls had uh, uh, used more socially appropriate facial expressions, closer to typically developing. And when we looked at good eye contact, we found that the girls showed better eye contact. Again, if you were looking at a girl who was presenting to you like this, she'd start to appear quite normal. I mean, ISD kids looking at you in the eyes? That just doesn't happen if you're a clinician. If you're dealing with boys all the time, you know, boys will look at you in the mouth, they'll look at the floor, they'll look around, they'll look over here, anywhere but in the eyes. ASD girls turn up, where are they looking? They're looking at in the eyes and you go, Not a, she hasn't got ASD, take her away. Unless you're experienced in this. Right, when we looked at positive non-verbal communication skills, lo and behold, uh, sorry, the girls are just as bad at this as are the boys. But when we looked at the negative non-verbal communication skills, if you have a look, sorry, go back. If you have a look, you find that the uh, girls show uh, hard to read, hard to remember how we structured. They show good, con less good control over the use of their body, and they show uh, more poor, uh, more poor sense of personal space than do the typical developing boys. In other words, they'll tend to invade your space, and they'll be a bit more clumsy. Exactly as Patricia pointed out. <clears throat> When we look at the multivariate structure of this data, some interesting things finally start to emerge. Uh, fine for a note, uh, all of these particular sets here, it's very clear that the ASD boys and ASD girls are similar. When we look at this one here, the relationship between good eye contact and positive nonverbal communications, eye contact, positive nonverbal communications, ASD girls are appearing more like typically developing girls. When you look at this at a multi-dimensional level, ASD girls appear more like typically developing girls for the intersection of non-verbal communications and eye contact. These are the precisely the things you'd look at in a girl and say, oh, she can't have autism. Take her away. I don't want to deal with this case. I've got other cases to deal with. Right. So we then analysed the, the data. We found ASD females absolutely fit uh, the ASD male model and the ASD males relatively fit the ASD females model. So they overlap each other. They have a lot of common variants. ASD females did not fit the typically developing female model, but typically developing females did fit the ASD model. So what that told us is ASD girls actually have more variability in their communication skills, in their communications, than even typically developing girls. Now, that might sound a little uh, counterintuitive, so I'll illustrate it for you. If you're a typically developing girl, and you know how to communicate well, like all the other typically developing girls, like all the typically developing girls that are here today, and you know how to communicate well, you communicate in a narrow band of different behaviours. But if you're an ASD girl, who doesn't know how to communicate appropriately, you'll try every strategy under the sun. And therefore, you will have a wider array of different behaviours. You'll do things, have a more variable set of behaviours than will typically developing girls. Typically developing girls know how to do it. ASD girls are flopping around like fish trying to figure out exactly what they need to do. They just don't. They don't know what to do, so they're trying to figure it out. So the variance in typically developing girls is less than the variance in ASD girls. Right. Presentation. Now, this is the most interesting, I think, because this is the one that we all know about. This is the one that, when a kid turns up, you, you look at them. You see a kid and you go, oh, yeah, this looks like a normal kid, or this looks like a funny-looking kid. So you've got that very clear indicator. This is the thing that social psychologists say takes 30 seconds. The 30 seconds, uh, the first 30 seconds of it, any meeting you'll have somebody makes all the difference, and this is it. This is presentation. And anyone, any of, any one of you who have ever interacted with, tried to illustrate to, raise, teach, educate an ASD child will know the real difficulty. My favourite story of this is. is there's an ASD case uh, we were told of a little boy who, who, who went to his first party in a Spider-Man costume. It was a fancy dress party. Every party he ever went to from there on, what did he want to go in? Spider-Man. When he's 15, a little bit of a problem, Spider-Man outfits, but that's what he went in. 
Uh, getting these kids to grasp how to dress appropriately is a bit of a problem. Now, what do we find? ASD girls and ASD boys on personal care, very similar. Although, notably, uh, ASD girls do better on the wearing of makeup than ASD boys. Uh, we didn't measure wearing makeup in ASD boys, just to be clear. In presentation, uh, we find ASD boys, ASD girls, very similar. When we look at the intersection of these structured variables, we find that presentation and personal care, pre uh, grooming and personal care, very similar. Presentation and interest in fashion, very similar ASD boys to ASD girls. What we find the difference, and the interesting difference, the subtle difference here, is the intersection of personal care to interest in fashion, we find ASD girls have a strong interest in fashion, and when they have that interest in fashion, it relates to a change in their personal care behaviours. We find that uh, they, the relationship between presentation and grooming, ASD girls look more like typically developing girls. Once they have an interest in that presentation, they pay attention to their grooming. And once they've got an interest in grooming, of course, that leads back to the interest in fashion. In other words, it's a healthy sort of circle. Once they get an interest in fashion, and of course, once you get these kids interested in something, they become obsessional about it. And I've seen cases, in fact, I have a student who I won't name, and I'm pretty sure she's on the spectrum, but she one day told me how amazed she was that she actually figured out that she could wear a different coloured handbag to her nails. Every day she'd turn up in my office from a meeting and she'd have a different coloured handbag and matching nails and matching shoes and a matching dress. Must have spent a fortune. And then one day she came to me and she said, Mark, I've worked it out. I can wear different coloured nails with different coloured handbags. It's opened up my whole wardrobe. Once you get these girls on that kind of healthy triad, they become quite distinct from um, the boys. So, we looked at the models, ASD females relatively fit the ASD male, male model, no surprises there. ASD males do not fit the ASD females model. Oh, wow, girls differ on presentation. ASD females relatively fit the typically developing female model, and typically developing females absolutely fit the ASD male model. So, we have greater variance in the typically developing girls, but the ASD girls fit well inside the typically developing girls and show some overlap to the ASD boys. So, some ASD females can appear like typically developing females. They're our camouflaged girls. Only in multivariate analyses can we discern the ASD females from the ASD males. To summarise, ASD females and males show superficial similarity in behaviour, communication and presentation. No, superficial. Both groups show subtle differences in behaviour, communication and presentation. And in support of the camouflage hypothesis, ASD females may be better presented than ASD males and may appear, appear similar to typically developing females. ASD females may be quieter, less disruptive than ASD males, more like typically developing females. And ASD females may superficially show communication skills typically typical of typically developing females. That was a complex sentence, wasn't it? Um, that's it. Thank you for your attention.